Oh, hi. I'm so happy to see you guys. I can't believe you're back for more of this nonsense. But to say I am not ecstatic to see you here would be a total lie, okay? <sighs> Let's be real. I love you guys. All 30 of you who have subscribed to this channel, you really, I mean, thank you. Before we get started, I need you to do two things. I need you to hit the like button. It's right below this video, even if you don't like it, because it's just a button and it's not going to affect your life. Just, just hit it, you know, just hit it. Secondly, I need you to subscribe to this channel again, not life altering. It's a button and you just press it and that would just be really great. Really, truly, you should do it. All right, so I moved to LA in 2013. Why, why not? You know, I've always just kind of picked up and moved to places for no particular reason. I think the reason for me was I was so tired of the struggle in New York City. I lived in bed Brooklyn. The winters were brutal. Getting on the train in the winter, schlepping, gets dark at four, you're getting slapped in the face by snow and whatever. So yeah, I decided I'm out, I'm leaving, I'm moving to LA. So I did. Unless you're rich, don't live in New York City, okay? I mean, unless you want to live out of the city with a driver, but obviously that again requires wealth. Or you want to play Russian roulette and take the train and hope to God you don't get stabbed to death by a psycho criminal. I mean, it's really up to you. So I suggest you don't live in New York, especially the way things are going right now. You don't want to be in a high density place. You want to be in a place where you can skedaddle at moment's notice and not be kind of stuck in the shit show. You know what I mean? So anyway, back to LA. Okay. So again, moved to LA 2013, moved in with a great friend. He was such a gentleman and let me stay with him for a few months in a studio, on a futon, with bed bugs. It was a great time. I'm telling you, it was a pivotal moment, and it always lights a fire under your ass when you're not in an ideal situation. Am I right or am I right? So given my stellar resume that I had at the time, I actually landed a really cool job working as Guy O'Series executive assistant. Now, I don't know if you know who he is, but he manages Madonna and U2, and he has he's a big tech investor, and basically like, Hollywood royalty. So moving to LA and landing a job of that caliber was kind of insane and I got really lucky. So that was awesome. But let's be honest, working for a guy of that caliber is hard, hard work. High, high stress, working all the time, basically full-blown anxiety attacks 24-7. So, and you don't really get paid much money. So I don't recommend you do this unless, of course, you're obsessed with that industry and you like being around celebrities all day. But for me, it just really wasn't for me. So I quit like after a year, I think. But, you know, we left on good terms. I did a lot of freelance for him um, after that. And to today, to this day, we are still great friends. So, Guy, if you're watching, thank you very much. The perks simply didn't outweigh the lifestyle. While people do treat you different because you do work for Guy Osiri and a lot of people want to get close to him, it's not real. It's fake. It's just not, it's just for me, it wasn't worth it. You know, I didn't move to LA to become famous or chase my dreams or become a Hollywood star or musician. I moved just for the fun of it. it it's perfect weather. It's Los Angeles. It's Southern California. It's something I've always wanted to do. So unless this is something you are dying to do, I really would advise against it. It's just not worth it, especially now. So what did I do after I left Guy? I honestly couldn't tell you. I have no idea. I probably blocked it out because it was probably awful. Um, now, my next job, which was a huge pivotal moment for me as well, was working for Thomas Halsigo. Now, if you don't know who that is, he is a sculptor, painter from Leeds, England. Lovely man. He's uh, represented by Gagosian, Hauser and Worth, 
um, a lot of the big galleries. And I was his executive assistant, personal assistant, nanny, the whole thing. You know, it starts as one job. And then before you know it, you have 17 jobs. So, yeah. So I think week one, we were heading to Paris for an art show with the full family, two young children. Yeah, it was wild. So you have to understand when you do these jobs, you have to be able to deal with high stress environments, very quick on your feet, calm, collected, and patient because you're you're working for people that really don't have a good grasp on reality. They're rich, they're they're powerful, and they want what they want when they want it, which I understand, but it's hard. You know, whatever they want, you're the one that has to make it happen. So again, if you're thinking of moving to LA and you don't have a solid reason to go there, these are most of the jobs. A lot of estate management, executive assisting, personal assisting, chefs, things of this nature. So, I mean, you could you you can make decent money and have a good career in LA, but you have to be a beast. Like you really do. And I'm just not. Like I admit it, I'm not. I don't deal well with high stress chaotic environments. Now, a lot of great things did happen to me while I lived in LA. Like it was 8 eight years in my life. I met my husband at the time. I have met amazing people. The experiences, I can't even begin to tell you. I obviously can't talk about half of them um, for like NDAs or whatever, but you know, LA is a fun place and I get it. And I understand why people would love to live there. Now let's fast forward to why I left LA. So we are now in the year 2020. The world had officially turned into crazy town. LA was now invasion of the body snatchers. Everyone had just lost their critical thought. They have drank the Kool-Aid. And just like that, a new religion was formed. And that religion was called COVID. Yes, that is right. It was a religion and it was the way of life. And if you didn't follow the rules, well, you were a bad person and you were going to kill grandma. There was not one shred of skepticism when all this stuff happened. Zero, zero questions. Just it is what it is. Do as you're told. Okay. Do as you're told. Something I refer to as groupthink. In the town of Los Angeles, it's a big groupthink. Everyone believes the same thing. Everyone does the same thing. Everyone virtue signals all day, and they act like they're so much better than everybody else. It was great. I loved it. So naturally, the curious cat that I am, I started researching it. I I wasn't buying it. I knew there was something off. So I questioned it. And I started voicing my opinions and my my concerns to my fellow Los Angelians. And let's just say it wasn't really taken very well. I questioned all of it. All of it. All of it. Some people just don't like when you question things, especially in LA. You think like us or else, or else you're just a crazy person. So after a while, you get kind of tired of being called a crazy person and you just say, fuck it, I'm out of here. So I did. I left LA. I left everything behind. Everything. Like I left, I didn't plan to leave forever, but I did. So I left all my shit at my house. It was rough, very, very rough. So I am going to make another video as to what exactly happened and why I'm in Florida and why I've basically started my whole life over. So if you guys like this video or this story, let me know. Um, If not, that's fine too. But I just wanted to share. I just want to get some content out there and, you know, getting a repetition going. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video. And again, like it, subscribe. I mean, that'd be so cool. Okay. Thanks guys.